I would love to talk about saddle thrombus. Now pay attention cat owners because this one's important for you, especially if you have a cat with underlying heart disease. <laughs> The term saddle thrombus is a more layman's term for what we science nerds call an aortic thromboembolism, or ATE. And since I love defining things, let's start there. The term thromboembolism just means a blood clot that has gotten stuck somewhere and is preventing blood flow to a particular region of the body. And the term aortic refers to the aorta, which is the main tube that takes blood from the heart and delivers it to the rest of the body. So if we smush all that together, an ATE is a blood clot in the aorta that is preventing the flow of blood. And the reason it's sometimes called a saddle thrombus has nothing to do with riding a horse, but has everything to do with the location of the blood clot. The aorta will start at the heart and run pretty much the entire length of the body until it eventually breaks off into two smaller blood vessels, one going to the back left leg and one going to the back right leg. Now, by definition, that branching point is where a saddle thrombus will get stuck. And that branching point where the aorta breaks into two smaller vessels is often referred to as the saddle, which is where the term saddle thrombus comes from. Generally, a saddle thrombus is going to be a complication of advanced heart disease in cats, and the way heart disease leads to the saddle thrombus has to do with a very important triangle. And no, it's not the love triangle between Bella, Jacob, and Edward. This doohickey right here is called Virchow's triad, and these are the three risk factors that cause blood clots to form. Now, in cats with heart disease, the physical changes that happen to the inside of the cat's heart make them more prone to all three of these risk factors happening within the heart itself. This will cause tiny little blood clots to form inside of the heart, which eventually become a big clot. And a saddle thrombus happens when that big clot exits the heart, enters the aorta, and gets stuck at that branching point. We typically diagnose this based on exam findings and our history, but we can also do it by comparing blood pressures and blood sugars between the front and the back legs. In cats with a saddle thrombus, they'll either have no or very poor blood flow to the back legs, so our blood pressure and sugar in the back legs will be lower when compared to the front legs. The clinical signs of a saddle thrombus all involve Involve the back legs because the issue involves a blood clot preventing blood flow to the back legs. And the severity of the clinical signs depends on both the size of the clot and the location. If the clot is small enough, sometimes it only blocks the flow of blood to one of the back legs instead of both of them, and sometimes it's small enough to where it only partially stops the flow of blood. Statistically speaking, about 78% of cases of a saddle thrombus will affect both back legs instead of just one. Treating a saddle thrombus in a cat that's lost the ability to move both of its back legs is extremely difficult. We not only have to start medications to break down the clot, but we also have to treat the underlying heart disease or heart failure if it's present. While the prognosis does depend a little bit on the severity, it's generally considered very poor with a zero to about 12% chance of survival if both back legs are having issues. 